Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm going to actually do a summary of my 1 to 40, which I did in 12 hours and 55 minutes. It was a total of 48 raids. I'm going to go into details like the stats of my actual raid itself, the maps I ran and why, um, the order of the quest kind of thing as well, which has been the tasks, uh, notable things that I've, I've worked out over the period of doing it, and lastly, my summary of the whole leveling process at the moment and its current format. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So guys, to get level 40, you require 1.87 million XP. And the reason why level 40 is important is at the moment, uh, to unlock all the gear, minus the gear that's locked behind uh, traders, um, all traders become available at level 40. So generally, when I do a challenge, I go from 1 to 40, purely for that reason. Because uh, at level 40, really all you have to do is complete some more tasks to get the actual items that are locked behind tasks, and everything else is available to you in the game. So I kind of believe, personally, that the end game begins at level 40. And generally, the player population will start dropping off once they hit level 40 and they've experienced all the new gear. And then uh, the, the more, let's say, casual player base that are just keen to see the new stuff will play to about then and then drop off. So level 40 is what is, well, is the reason why I go to level 40 is for that. So from these 48 raids, uh, I had 8 deaths. Um, about 3 of them, I think, were from, uh, from the scav bosses. And then the rest were either players or unlucky from scavs. Uh, but overall, I pretty much avoided combat for this. Um, now, the Australian servers aren't the most populated at the moment. But every time I did need to get PMC kills, I went to the most populated map, being labs at the moment. Ran straight into middle and tried to shoot people. Now, I need to also state here, um, I did two 1 to 40s in the same sitting, in the same stream. The first one took 19 hours. And that was 100% solid. There was no assistance from anyone outside of my... Oh, no, no assistance at all from from anyone besides myself. I was just doing the raids. The second run through, I got uh, my community gave me thirty million rubles, uh, and we were determined to see how fast I could do it. Now Australian servers are quite underpopulated at the moment, and for me to get twelve PMC kills quickly um, is quite difficult. And so I actually stated to my my viewers at the time, uh, if you wanted to queue for an Australian server on the labs when I do, uh, and run at me and give it a go, they did. Uh, so there were, was was a few hatchlings uh, running at me with that, which did help the process. Now, I, this whole experiment here was for me to min-max kind of thing, seeing how it would be to stand and doing it by myself, and then obviously with a little bit of assistance, or kind of a lot with the money, and then um, and then the rest was pretty much on my own. I, like, no one really helped me after that, uh, running at me, or at least being in the same game as me to get the PMC kills. Now, moving on to the actual statistics itself, I actually killed 28 PMCs in these 48 raids. So you could say I pretty much saw a PMC every second raid that I killed, and I killed 239 scavs. So that makes up for the 267 kills. Um, scavs are an important factor for some of the quests, but overall, you don't even need to kill a lot of scavs to get this quest XP as well. Now, that is the majority of the actual stats that really are pertinent to people. Um, the total stash value, I think I finished around the same amount as I started, around the 29 or 28 million mark, uh, and when I was gifted 30 million. So I kind of maintained the money throughout anyway. Uh, I didn't actually focus on looting much at all during the second run through because I was mostly just going as fast as I could. Uh, every now and then I had the opportunity to press F on a body to get the extra loot XP. I did that, but overall it was more just... Touch the body, get the fuck out, and uh, continue on getting your quest done as quickly as possible. Now, the maps I ran and why, um, pretty much, there are six maps in Tarkov at the moment. Um, I did eight shoreline runs, five wood runs, 12 customs, five factory, 10 interchange, and eight labs. Now, I could probably drop factory down to three runs if I really wanted to. Um, I was going in there to do the quest, but I, I decided to quickly go in there and do a quest early, which was the... Um, the, the toolkits and repairing the actual panels. That was to get the mechanic quest line uh, underway for that part of the quest line. Um, but overall, the the its initial start was in labs just to get myself up to level 5, I think it was. Actually, no, I wanted to get level 10 as quickly as possible, which actually worked after, I think, one run of labs. I was pretty much level 10. I did uh, one run, got about 10,000 XP. That was enough to get... Um, so the quest started for skier. I got... A uh, few of the therapist tasks done where we were just handing in quest items. I got the skier quest handed in for the 3M armors and the tozzers. And that got me up to level 10, which unlocked mechanic. Then you get the gunsmith quest. And bam, you are, you are like level 12 or something straight away off the first pretty much pretty much first run. Uh, or, or I think I might have actually got level 7 on the first. And then um, after the second, I, was, I hit level 10. Uh, and my second run was just the customs, purely just to get those three scav kills. Um... 
And that was the focus of the second run. Now, it really didn't matter um, the order of the maps I did. You could do this in any order you want. Um, the way I do it though to min-max the most I possibly can is I try and stack up as many quests on the same map at the same time. I actually didn't touch an interchange map or the interchange map until my 25th raid. From raids 25 to 31 were entirely done on interchange. That's because I stacked up every single interchange uh, quest I could, including the first one, which was kill 30 scavs. So I actually had, um, well, when I was killing the 30 scavs, I think I was placing down like the gold, and, uh, the gold chains and stuff. So I was also doing other objectives whilst I was in there, like placing down the Wi-Fi camera, trying to max... Uh, max as many quests on the same map as possible and this is why i actually didn't go woods uh until the 12th raid which um if you know shootout picnic which is the third proper task that actually was only um that that usually i would do that on my third raid i'd go um kill three scavs bronze pocket watch go to woods right and that'd be the third third raid of what i do straight after a wipe and this is um me experimenting with different options to speed it up uh, and trying to stack more quests on woods or other maps at the same time. After, uh, out of all these quests, you, you, you've got the idea now that what I'm trying to achieve with these runs is I'm trying to max as many quests on top of each other, so that way I'm getting heaps of quest XP. And the majority of my XP from this entire um, 1 to 40 was from quests, just to make that clear. Um, the quests are nearly entirely done by just looting items, handing them in, or finding an item in a map, handing it in, and then there's only two that I actually did that required you to kill PMCs. The first one being Stir Up or Stir Up, which requires you to kill 12 PMCs. Um, this one is from Skier. Uh, that, that's why I went labs and focused just on killing PMCs. I was literally just running around the middle, middle of the map trying to kill everyone that was trying to loot the LEDXs and stuff like that. And then Friend from the West Part 1, which is Kill 5 USEC. And that's on any map now. So that's actually quite an easy one to do. I actually didn't focus on getting those USEC kills straight away directly. I actually was doing some other quests at the same time and was lucky enough to kill some USEC. I think I killed some on Woods and just around in different areas. And, and that was lucky for me um, because that way I didn't even have to focus on doing a run on a specific map, say Labs, to get those PMC kills. Now, when the wipe, or later on in this game, when the population's higher, these quests are not an issue at all. I remember when I was doing uh, Stir Up or Stir Up, I, I can't remember which way you say it. When I was doing that quest after a wipe, I get that in like two runs. There's so many guys running around with pistols and uh, SMGs and, and AKs with no armor. Uh, you can get those 12 PMC kills quite quickly. If you just do uh, two or three factory runs, because people are farming factory for, for 3M armors, uh, straight after a wipe. That's another place you can get those 12 PMC kills very quickly. So besides having to do those two PMC killing quests, the rest of the game is pretty much a PvE up to level 40. You don't really need to focus on trying to find players. You could avoid gunshots if you really want to. Um, I know if you wanted to go down the Punisher storyline, um, I actually didn't even get to finish Punisher Part 2 on this, this uh, run through. Um, usually I do get through Punisher Part 2 and 3, um, but... Punisher Part 4 does require you to kill PMCs on Shoreline. Um, depending on how populated the Shoreline map is, you could go down this path to try and get it. it Punisher Part 4, 5, and 6. Um, 4 is just kill PMCs on Shoreline and Scavs on Woods. Once you get past that one, that is the actual big choke point on this storyline. Punisher Part 5 is literally just buy some items from the traders and hand them straight in. And Punisher Part 6 is kill PMCs on any map and hand in some dog tags, uh, which you can do passively while doing other quests. I pretty much see is, is uh, the way I see Punisher Part 4 is when you complete that, that's worth 100,000 XP because the three, the two quests after it are pretty much passively done or done entirely in the menu. You get 100,000 XP that way and um, you get an Epsilon container as well. So if you're on a standard edition, it's a good way of getting a, a bigger container. So um, if you are trying to level, there is an option of doing that, if it, particularly if you're, you're focused on getting an Epsilon container. Um, there's 100,000 XP from finishing just those three quests. Uh, which all kind of are linked together quite closely. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is the majority of the quests you can do without even having to focus on finding people. So, for example, um, you know, you'll go shoreline to kill scavs. 
Uh, for the Punisher series, uh, Spa Tour, which is part of the Peacekeeper storyline, you'll need to kill scavs on uh, Shoreline. And then there's the Peacekeeping mission, which I actually did on this run-through, where you've got to put it on the UN armor with the blue helmet and kill 12 scavs in each map. That's with 60,000 XP. So I actually did that quest while doing other quests, which uh, was like a, a passive way of getting um, 60,000 XP over doing four maps. So it, uh, hopefully you get understanding what I'm trying to, trying to do here. Now... Um, woods you need to kill for shootout picnic, 14 scavs, um, Operation Aquarius, which is a therapist quest for customs. Um, there's 15 scavs there. I did that passively while doing some other quests. Um, there's Polykim Hobo. I actually didn't focus on doing this at all, uh, and I finished it doing the peacekeeping mission for the peacekeeper, uh, which is the kill the 12 scav ones. That got finished up during that same period. And then uh, Interchange, you're required to kill 30 scavs as well. And that pretty much is all the scav killing missions. And then the rest of all, everything you do up for all the other quests. Of the 100 and, 102 quests I completed, um, I think about 85 of them didn't require me to kill anything at all. It was just loot and get the fuck out. So for anyone who says it's difficult to level, and this is where I guess my topic of uh, my summary of this is going to start beginning, but... Um, anyone says it's difficult to level is probably not focusing on the right way of leveling. Um, now, I want to just say a notable, notable uh, <clears throat> as as pretty much the last few things I was talking about with the tasks of being notable things of uh, you actually don't need to focus on killing much. Um, you can actually get a lot of, of your tasks done without even noticing it almost. Like um, a good example is I took a Mosin in with me and was doing the kill scavs 30 or sorry 50 or 60 meters away unscoped. I was doing that just as I took a spare Mosin and I was like killing scavs for another quest or just running around like, oh, there's a scav ages way. Rip out the Mosin, take a shot, and, and it's done. I was doing all that stuff really passively like um, and, and leveling it up that way instead of actually just focusing on getting stuff done. Um, so you'll be surprised also how much money you'll make from getting your quest done too. Um, uh, the the guide, which is the one of the last peacekeeper quests, um, it, it gives a hundred thousand XP and twenty five thousand US dollars. So it's worth getting these peacekeeper quests done, and you don't even actually have to finish the full peacekeeper storyline because that's linked out in a different in, in a different way. So moving into more of my summary of the whole leveling process and the current format. So personally, and this is not going to be liked by some people. I know I've I've been getting a lot of flack recently for me saying this so openly. I think it's too easy to level. Honestly, um, yes, I do have six days a week, eight hours a day where I play this game and I, I've learnt it through and through. The information I put out there is well and truly information I've practiced and learnt, so therefore it's it's information you guys can, can use to your advantage if you want to. There's no requirement to use it, but it's there. Um, and if you want to level in this game, you can do it very quickly without even having to stress about kill, killing uh, players. And half the time, there's not even that many scavs you need to kill. One of the biggest tips, guys, go night raids. If you are worried about dying to a PMC, go a night raid. Um, change this. If you feel like you're getting uh, hacked on by a player uh, and there's a players flying around all over the map and you're getting cheated out all the time, go to, a, go to, a, go, go to the launcher. I'll show you right now uh, how to do that. Go to your launcher right here and click change server. And now uh, this is all going to be turning on you. But see, like I can pick Sydney 2, Sydney 1, uh, Hong Kong if I want to go there. If you're from America, you'll have all these servers you can pick from. You could just pick a different server uh, or just two or three of them. And then there won't be as many uh, or there won't be the same people on there if you feel like you're getting hacked by the same player. What I'm trying to say is you can level up very quickly just by doing quests. Now, yes, I did start with 30 million rubles and... Um, I blew a lot of it really quickly, just wastingly. I didn't care what the prices were for items. I just bought them. Right? I didn't loot any items. So, like, yes, I started with 30. I finished with 30 million as well because I gave away all the money at the end anyway. Um, at the That was the end of my last stream. I just gave it away to someone. So the 30 million rubles were still there. Yes, you won't be able to do it as quickly because you won't have that money at the start, but you, you can loot as you go. Um, I didn't focus on that at all. I also went straight to the flea market, found whatever gun that was the right gun for the gunsmith task, and just bought it. I was probably paying two or three hundred thousand rubles extra for some guns just to hand it in because I didn't want to waste time by building it myself. So I was wasting money as well to try and do it as fast as possible. So uh, if you build these guns yourself and level them up yourself, 
that it will be possible to get these uh, quests done quite quickly and for cheaper as well. Uh, and obviously, as you go through a raid, say if you find a car battery, you've just saved yourself 100,000 rubles uh, because they're quite expensive at the moment, for example. So it's just knowledge is the power in this game of how to level fast. So overall, I do believe it's too, uh, too easy to level, but they could leave it exactly how it is, and I'd be happy. Uh, the reason why I think it's too easy is because um, in, the, in the long term of this game, there's going to be this point where they're not going to do any more wipes. They've openly said that multiple times, that there's going to be no more wipes, and the game will just be ran like normal. And what would actually happen is uh, you're just going to finish your quest and then go into this open world. This is the dream of Nikita, um, and I hope it does go this way uh, and, and it works. But you you won't have anything else to do after your task. Now, they said they're going to put dailies in and all this other stuff, and, and, and it will get there eventually. But my suggestion, and in my opinion, there's a, there's way too much clutter at the moment on traders. Um, you are stacking quests way too easily. Like, if I've got 20 quests all available to me at the same time, that's too many quests available at the same time. I feel like it's in World of Warcraft. I don't remember if you remember the days where you had your whole like line of quests on the side. You're like, holy shit, that's messy as, as all hell. Um, my suggestion is maybe make it so there's extra levels on the traders. There's currently four levels on traders. Push it all the way out to five or maybe even six. Have the very, very top tier items. I don't care what you guys can argue over what the top tier items are. I don't really care. The highest level being level, also level five, so we had one extra level. You make that say level fifty or around around then. So there's actually some time to get there, and with those level fifty, uh, you just have like four items, and they're all trade uh, uh, barter items anyway. So you can't just purchase them. Uh, and so then when you do see these top tier items, you actually think, oh, that's cool. We get to see this like we get to like work towards it. Another thing that you could actually do as well for these top tier items, and this is going to be probably read on hard, but I think it's actually something that could give us something to do, and money sinks are important in a game like this. It's quite easy at the moment to make money. You know how when you're leveling up, um, and this is another thing I actually hate, but I'll, I'll, I'll go into it. When you're leveling up, you've got to level up your traders. You've got to get the reputation, and you've got, the, got to get the level. But the last thing you've got to do is get the money spent. Now, Ragman is absolutely stupid at the moment. I feel like I'm just wasting a million rubles buying back and forth every time I level Ragman from level 1 to 2. It, it's wrong. It, it should be just 500k. Make it available so we can um, get to that. Around the same time, you're actually going for level 2. So when you were like level 15 and you're uh, completing the first task for Ragman, you could actually just go, all right, cool. I've already spent 500,000 on Ragman because really you get level 15 so quickly that you don't ever, like you've never spent 500 oh, a million rubles on him. So it's just a money sink there. But what I'm saying is to get to level five, make the, like the amount of money spent on the trader something high, like I'm just going to put a ballpark figure out there. It's just a random figure. Make it like 30 million, right? So from it's giving us a reason just to burn money into the game and spend more money on traders to get to level five on that trader. And then when you get level five, it's literally just like three items. Make it the thick weapon case, thick item case on therapist level four. Sorry, level five. That's it. They're the only two items you get from therapist level five. Uh, for Propor, you might just have, I don't know, an RPK or maybe an extra gun on top. And you just have it. So this is an idea I've been playing around with in my brain. But it's it's like giving reward for the people that, uh, one, doing all their quests to get there, spending the money, burning money through the game. And, and personally, I think it's a, an easy way to, I don't know, to, I want to say prolong the game, but give it more longevity. So if people want to do a grind, they can. If people are playing more casually, that's fair. You can get level 40 still quite easily and have like 95% of the items available. Every time I go to Mechanic and I'm looking for an item at the moment, it is a clusterfuck. Like there is so many fucking items there on each level. When you're, you're scrolling through it, I can't find it. I know this is turning into a bit of a rant, but um, hopefully you guys are learning something from it. Uh, I'm trying to just give my opinion out there and I know it's not going to always be... Uh, agreed upon and that's fine uh, i like constructive uh conversation about the game and, and particularly to improve it 
The final point I want to go, talk about is the amount of people that are, are giving me grief for saying that the game is you level too easily and that it's because I've got so much time. If the proof isn't in the pudding in this video about how easy it is to level if you actually know what you're doing, um, then I think the game isn't made for casual players. If you want to play a game that you can play three hours a week and uh, you have a bit of fun and you'll eventually get there, or whatever, if you want to play that game three hours a week, go play a Battle Royale. Like, go play a game that is more casual, like, aimed at casual players. All your Battle Royales or um, Counter-Strike, CSGO, like, you can go play a game and it's 45 minutes and you have your fun. Tarkov is based around this survival world of post-apocalypse immersion. I'm going to stop using the word realistic with Tarkov. I don't believe it's a realistic game. I think it's an immersive game. We talked about this in my uh, stream yesterday. I think it's an immersive game. Um... And that's the whole purpose of Tarkov. It's meant to take up time. You're meant to do stuff slow and deliberately, not always run around like Call of Duty, but you can play it however you want. And the game should take ages for us to get to completion. A game like World of Warcraft, which is a mess massive multiplayer online game, doesn't get completed by everyone. There's games out there that you don't get completed by everyone. You don't get to do everything. You don't get to have the best items. You don't hear people in that community going, oh, but it's not casual friendly. I can't get to have that best item in the game. It's something for some people to strive towards. I'm going to leave this here. If I cop flack, albeit, but this is just my opinion, and I think it's a, it's a fair, fair point to be able to put out there what I believe in with this game. I love it to bits. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, guys, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. Go down to the link below. Give me a follow on Twitch if you want to talk about any of this stuff. Uh, I'll be streaming straight after this video, but also um, be streaming uh, six days a week. I'm losing up my uh, my fo uh, my finish. Uh, and guys, lastly, I'll see you next time. Ooh, uh, just a little bit. Ooh, a uh, little bit more. Ooh, uh, just a little bit. Veritas is who I'm gonna. Nope, nope, nope.